The NVIDIA RTX 4060 is here at last, and while it offers up a good proposition for those upgrading from an older 10 series card, there isn't much of a worthy uplift from the 30 series when looking at an MSRP based card. But today is the turn of a non MSRP based card, with a higher overclock and what could be a superior cooler in the form of the Gigabyte Gaming OC. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. With this thermal tape, tough power, 1350 watt, fully modular power supply with full ATX 3.0 compatibility, a smart zero fan and PCIe Gen 5 ready, my PC will have all the life it needs. It's alive, it's alive. To find out more, click the link in the description below. So the RTX 4060 Gaming OC. Being honest, if you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that the Gaming OC range is one of my personal favourites. It has long been a great series of cards that blends performance with more affordable pricing thanks to the long-standing Windforce cooling design that Gigabyte has been using for many years now. Also, being an OC model, it is slightly overclocked, as the name suggests from the factory, running at 2550 MHz compared to the reference card that runs at 2460. Of course, you're getting more than just a speed boost as it comes with a bigger cooler that features three 80mm fans, RGB fusion, dual BIOS and a metal backplate too. So kicking things off with the design, the Gigabyte RTX 4060 Gaming OC looks great, but I've always been a fan of the Windforce cooler design. It's a sensible mixture of kind of boring professional aesthetics and a bit of gamer cool, and lands kind of somewhere in the middle. They could go over the top, but if you want an outlandish cooler, then simply check out their Aura series instead. Now, they may not change this design much for each new card, but hey, as the saying goes, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. With three fans over a surprisingly large heatsink, at least relative to the size of the PCB, cooling of the GPU should be pretty good. Plus, the card uses the Windforce system where the outer fans spin clockwise and the middle fan counterclockwise, creating a powerful air vortex that helps pull more heat away from the heatsink. The card is only two slots thick, but it is quite long, with the heatsink being twice the length of the PCB. Now, if you look closely, you can see the actual PCB stops near the middle, just where the power connector is. And this card doesn't need a lot of juice either, so it can make do with the old 8-pin PSU connector, which is nice as most people aren't a fan of the new 12VH PWR connector anyway. The backplate looks pretty special on this card with a sort of gunmetal finish that looks pretty slick and, again, should help assist with keeping things cool and under control. Furthermore, there's a huge hole at the back where you can see a thick and fairly dense heatsink along with two robust heat pipes, allowing for heat to be exhausted right out the back of the card. The rear I.O. features two HDMI and two DisplayPort connectors, while some other 4060s use one HDMI and three DisplayPort, so depending on your display configurations, this is certainly something you should pay attention to. In terms of the PCB, it's what we've come to expect from a gaming OC card and the power delivery is made up of a 4 plus 1 power phase setup. The GPU utilises the Alpha and Omega 36306 MOSFETs which are rated for 28 amps of current and sit under the UPI UP9512U controller, while the memory uses a single Alpha and Omega 36344 MOSFET along with a 7212 buck controller. Around the core are the four SK Hynix 2GB memory ICs with plenty of room for more chips if Nvidia suddenly decides that 8GB of VRAM isn't enough. So it all looks pretty good and I'm expecting good things, but let's see how things compare against the reference spec Inno 3D card that we tested it against in a small selection of games. And if you want to find out more on the Inno 3D card, check out our video on that that we published just the other day. Starting things off with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, where I do find it strange that as the average FPS goes up on the RTX 4060 cards, the 1% lows go down. Albeit, it's only plus or minus 1%, but it still does seem a little strange to me. That being said, while the Gigabyte is on the top here, they are all largely performing about the same. It's a similar affair in Cyberpunk 2 with a 2 FPS difference from each RTX 4060 to the next, but overall 62 FPS 1% lows and 80 FPS average should make for a good gaming experience at full HD with ultra settings. In Death Stranding, the Inno 3D is leading the pack with 155 FPS and the Gigabyte a small degree behind. In this title, the new Nvidia cards very closely match the performance of the RX 7600, which given that they are a similar price, that's not overly surprising. And then finally, in Watch Dogs Legion, 83 FPS average and 69 FPS in the 1% lows on the game in OC, which is identical to the Inno 3D card, with the iGame just getting an extra 1 FPS on both of them. 
So performance wise, the gaming OC doesn't really offer much beyond a reference card, but that's a given these days as when looking at different AIB cards, it really comes down to the cooler performance and what they're able to do with temperatures. Now for the temperatures, we ran F122 for an hour long benchmark. And here we see the Gigabyte ran a whopping 11 degrees cooler than the Inno 3D coming in at 60 degrees. For the hotspot temps, coincidentally, it came in 11 degrees cooler again, seeing it at 74 degrees over the Inno 3D's 85 degrees. For the fan speed, it came in significantly lower than Inno with an RPM of 1575, leaving it extremely quiet. And then finally, looking at the power, this time the difference isn't so clear. The Gigabyte came in 0.1 watts lower than the Inno, so barely even a comparison at that point. But hey, it was certainly cooler and quieter. So the gaming OC is certainly better when it comes to cooling, and that's expected as the card will sit you back a little more money, coming in at $324.99 in the UK compared to the $289.99 MSRP price. In the US, you could probably expect about $50 difference between this and say the Inno 3D or Zotac cards. What this means for the cost per frame is that the Gigabyte card does come in more expensive overall compared to both the Inno 3D card and Zotac Twin Edge card too. And even Nvidia's RTX 4060 Ti, a card that wasn't very well received, comes in more affordable per frame. Now, when we do these launches, it's often pretty clear that there aren't many major differences between the card's performance. That's certainly still true, but spending the extra money for an aftermarket card from brands like Gigabyte does have its advantages. You get a three year warranty, for instance. You're also usually paying for a little more of everything. And really it's up to you, and of course your wallet, if that's worthwhile. I mean, Gigabyte has a solid reputation with its Windforce cooler design, and I'm happy to see that it still holds up great here. That this isn't a particular power hungry card either, so it's not one that runs overly hot. And that means the triple fan Windforce design made light work of running cooler and quieter, and that was pretty evident in our F1 test. Now, I don't think this card is really going to appeal to, say, the enthusiast overclockers out there, but the dual BIOS certainly has its advantages for daily use and even troubleshooting. I mean, you can set a gaming profile with higher fan curves and boost clocks for when you're gaming with your mates with your headphones on, and then a lower power profile for those hot days when your PC may be sweating and you wanna let it breathe, so to speak. It's also factory overclocked, and while that's not going to give you a huge performance boost over the stock models, as we showed, certain titles may be able to harness that and squeeze a little more performance out of the GPU. So summing things up, if you're in the market for an RTX 4060, the Gigabyte Gaming OC series has long been one of the best value options on the market for many generations now. And that still holds true with the Gigabyte RTX 4060 Gaming OC. Even if the performance isn't any better as we're talking rasterization. I mean, the cooler clearly is, and it's honestly a great option for those looking to replace a graphics card from say, five plus years ago, such as the GTX 1050 Ti, GTX 1060, three or six gig, and maybe even the 16 series to a degree. But for those with a 3060, well, yeah, you are still better off holding off for now. So there we have it. What do you think of the RTX 4060 Gaming OC? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get a ton of exclusive behind the scenes content, a special area on our Discord, and much, much more. The link for all that good stuff is down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.